as the rest of the um, advisory groups come on in, let's settle our voices now. Thank you. We welcome here with us this morning the sisters of Notre Dame de Amour that are celebrating their feast today, and we're very happy that they are with us today. I'm asking everyone now to begin to gather your thoughts and prepare mass. A couple of reminders of things sometimes. We ask you that even more so than in the classroom, that you sit upright, give your presence to the stage, which is the altar, and know that God is present with us. We are celebrating Mass, we are receiving the Eucharist, and God is here with us today. So keep that in mind in the way that... And right now, as I'm speaking, I'm asking you not to speak. A couple of reminders also that a few of us would like to is when, um, if you have gum in your mouth, you should not have be chewing gum as you go up to receive the Eucharist, even as a blessing, if you're just receiving a blessing. And um, thank you, we'll be ready. Oh, one more thing, we know some of you uh, know we invited Father Stephen Sladesky, who was a East Catholic graduate of 1984, to celebrate Mass with us today as well because of Catholic Schools Week and we thought it would be nice that he would celebrate and he was a graduate of this school like all of you will be. Unfortunately, just this morning, he had something come up and he's unable to be with us today. So we're welcoming Father Jaime, who we're very fortunate came through for us this morning. So let us get ready and we'll be starting Mass in one moment. Thank you. 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. And good morning, in a very special way to love you, sisters of God, for that. At some point in your life, you made a choice. You heard the voice of God, and inspired by your father, also said, I'm going to do everything I can in my power to serve him. Leading to this place that we have uh, uh, right now, he's happy. Amazing. It all begins by God himself. He sends a revelation, a very powerful one, to St. Julie Villiard, who inspired her then to serve in every capacity, including teaching to each and every one of us. So we pray for each and every one of you. We give thanks to God. And we also pray for um, all your dreams and hopes. We pray also for Father Stephen, who's not feeling well. And because he's not feeling well, they're stuck with me. But I'm glad that I'm here. You know, God, God has ways of working, so we have to trust that when God says no, there's a reason. And therefore we pray. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were saying to heal the contrary heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, my ever living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was present on this day in the temple, in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
glory to you, Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every male opens the womb that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the cousin of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepare in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelations to the Gentiles, in glory to your people Israel. The child's father and the mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. In coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Israel. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you give most people a choice between a plate of broccoli or a plate of donuts, which would you think they would choose? Donuts. I always choose donuts, by the way. And I remember when I was growing up, um, I have an older sister, she's a year and a half I'm older than me. We go to dinner, and my mom, more often than not, has cooked some vegetables with me, I don't know, lettuce and tomatoes, which I didn't like. We eat a lot of beans in Puerto Rico, green beans. Oh my god, I think broccoli was the worst. And, you know, we would have to eat at least they would, you know, we have to make it, have to try it. Now, it's interesting because my reaction often was of a, you know, you and me, mom, right? I mean, if it was up to me, I'd be eating a couple of petals all the time. That's what I love cereal. But, you know, my mom would have us eat vegetables. You know, when I was growing up, uh, we learned, I mean, I didn't learn, but they learned that I was allergic to maple syrup, even though I really like pancakes with syrup. So, so I wanted syrup, would she say, yes, have it? No, because I was allergic. And it's interesting because, it, I'll be honest with you, growing up, it's just like, I, rather, my feeling was more of a, you know, let me be mom or dad, you know, let me do my own thing. And at times, I guess, my mom sensed that I would be mad at her or my sister. And I remember this clearly, um, because every once in a while, I don't know if it was both of us, because you're not a while, I was the one who was being annoying, but to her, or, or just mad at her, and she would say, you don't, you don't understand how much I love you. At one point, I think we, I was so mean to her that she was, I remember she was saying and crying. It's like, you don't understand how much we love you, you know, my dad and her. And maybe when you, she would say, you know, maybe when you grow up and, and you have your own kids, you, you would finally get it, you know, and it's hard to describe. You know, you don't fully understand. And she was right, by the way. When my nieces were born, I think that's when I began to really see that there's really no limit to what you can do for the one that you love. You don't understand. 
I mean, you can imagine how much Mary and Joseph loved Jesus, the baby. You know, it's quite privileged, by the way. And as you've learned and you've read from the Bible, Mary discovers she's, she has a choice to be the mother of the child, but she's not. She's legally married. At the time, there was a legal marriage. That was a, a, a attempt to marry. There were two phases for marriage. First, you get legally married in front of everyone of, of the, of the uh, neighbors and family. You give each other consent. But often the woman would then spend a year with her parents before she moves in with the husband. So by the time the angel calls Mary, she's already married to him. That's what it means that, that she was betrothed. If they're not living together, and in that culture, if you were found to be committing adultery, death. And yet, she says yes. Joseph, at first, doesn't want to take Mary because she's pregnant, she's afraid of what's going to happen to her, or perhaps what people would say of him. God manifests himself and he says, okay, this is it's God's will. And today in the gospel, we hear that in that love, because now they trust, God has a plan, they come to fulfill the law to present the baby, and yet something amazing happens. It sounds like a beautiful more than it is. You can imagine Mary, very young, probably in her 14, 13 years old, um, Joseph, the baby, they go into the temple, and Simeon takes the child and he speaks of the Holy Spirit. But what he says is just... Um, Disappointing for some and highly um, troublesome. Behold, he's looking at Mary. This child, which is a baby, by the way, cute baby, I imagine. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of men in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. This child, Jesus, who has and will have and will manifest eventually a magnetic personality and he will be kind and he has the power and can't understand how, if you have any illness, he can pray over you, he can faith in and you can and he can heal you. Amazing God, this God, this baby, will be a sign of contradiction. That's not a pretty picture. You know, my mom, I think, said no many times, because she knew what was best for me, even though when I was in college, I had everything I wanted. I had well, I'm not going to say that. I'll have cake for dinner. So I don't know. That was my way of rebellion. But there was a reason why. Growing up, a mom or a says, there's something better. And when that happens, more often than not, there's a conflict. And we have a tendency to say, just let me be. That's it. I don't let me do my own thing. And that's okay. We need to understand when that's happening in our lives. The question is whether we can open ourselves to the wisdom of why God perhaps is saying no. Perhaps why God is saying there's another way. Because when God says there's another way, and we're all into that, then amazing things can happen. Like having high school here in Manchester, which started, even though she was not thinking about East Catholic already in 1804, which is when the Order of Notre Sister Notre Dame are founded by St. Julie Miller. But she has a desire God has put something there. She has many manifestations of the real presence of God. And that leads to change everything he does in her life. Eventually, many, 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 many years ago, to the foundation of a Catholic high school. Why do we need a Catholic high school? Just to be honest, you know. Every school can do a very good job educating our students. By the way, your lives are transformed um, every time you go to school. When you go home today, you will be different from the moment you came in in the morning. Even if, whether you realize it or not. But why a Catholic school? Well, I mean, certainly we want you to discover your gifts, whether it's in science, sports, perhaps, arts, um, history. You have potential, you have dreams, and we want to help you achieve that. But to be honest, we have a Catholic high school, or Catholic schools, we have two in Manchester, St. Bridget and St. James. It's because of what God, what He wants to do in your life. And this child, who does become a contradiction, should be a contradiction to you in your lives. If you come to a high Catholic high school, or any Catholic school, and in all your time there, you just feel that you would be simply affirming whatever you want to do in your life, and everything's cozy, and nice, and kumbaya, then we really haven't shown you who Christ is. If you come to a school, a Catholic school, and you and only to discover yourself, that's not bad, but it's only half true, half truth. 
is not so much that I come to discover me. No. What I want to do, I want to discover who God created me to be. That's what we want for you. The best we can, get, we can give you is the opportunity that at one point, in your own journey of faith, I'm not saying everyone here is committed to who that is, but the opportunity that at one point you'll be able to say, I want to be with God for eternity. So you see, in a Catholic schools week, it's only been celebrated for 49 years, which we close this Friday. But we've had Catholic schools for longer than that, right? But at some point, parents, a lot of teachers, religious men and women, they realize what we are offering in the Catholic school is complaining. We have to tell everyone. Because it comes down to what Jesus wants, came to do, and it's doing in our lives. He will be a contradiction. That's not bad. Because what he offers is much better. But yeah, yeah, he will tell you there's a better way. And nowadays, let me tell you, this is going to be a great contradiction with all the ideologies that you're going to find on social media out there, perhaps even in the schools, in the way we look at life. He does have a better way. And what we celebrate today as we close Catholic Schools Week, as we also celebrate with the vocations of all the women who at one point said, like St. Julie the Villier, I also want to give myself to all those in service. What we want to celebrate is that, is the possibility. You and I, even me as a priest, we all have still a possibility to hear that there's a better version of ourselves. That Christ knows what that is. I, if you embrace that, there will be changes. You will have to decide if you make a change in the trajectories of your life. And that's okay, because God knows what is best. But it's not, perhaps not going to be easy. I, I dated it twice. I wanted to get married. And at some point, I realized God is calling to something else. It doesn't mean it was easy, but I know there's something better. Some of you, by the way, and it sounds funny, you may, by the way, you probably don't even think it's you. Some of you are called to the priesthood. And, and God knows that the best version of yourself and the degree of happiness that you might actually experience in this life is not that you won't be joyful in marriage, but the degree of joy will be greater in this life if you say yes to the priesthood. Some of you are definitely, and I know this, I don't know who, but I know some of you are called to religious life as women. And whether it is in education, as this is your Notre Dame, or in other aspects, perhaps you study and become a nurse or a doctor and you're still a religious woman, whatever it is, I can guarantee you some of you are. Most of you will probably be called to the vocation of marriage. But even that, Jesus says something that contradicts the way the world looks at it. It's in the Bible, right? And there's a conflict, okay, wrestle with that. But realize this. If you go through life and the image of Jesus or the idea of Jesus never really shocks you or never really makes you think about what you're doing in life, then, then that's not Jesus. I would just close with this. In the same way that perhaps in my mom's imperfection, um, I still know that she loves me, in God's perfection, He really loves me. And all of you are lovable. And some of you may be even struggling with that idea today. Am I not alone? I can't. Yeah, you are. Because he loves you. And everything he gives us is out of love. Because he knows there's something better. For you to be a man, a real man in the eyes of God, and a real woman in the eyes of God. So just give him a chance. You know, If you have questions, let us ask. Um, and just consider that he does have a plan for you. And that experience enjoying his life, it's possible. It really is. We see that in the lives of so many religious women, like all of you, Sister Notre Dame. When you look back at your life, and I'm sure you say, it was all worth it. How could it not be? It was all worth it. So let us stand and pray that we become servers to others. In everything we do, Jesus always called us to serve. So just for the it's part of our identity, that we be able to embrace that identity, that we be able to listen to what he has to say for us, and that when we wrestle, at least we give him the benefit of the doubt that there's something better for him. So I invite to so help us with the prayers of the faith. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer that Pope Francis, Archbishop Blair, and all who lead and serve the Church may be rich, richly blessed 
Blessed in God's goodness, mercy, and wisdom, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace throughout our world that leaders may keep the channels of dialogue open. Focusing on understanding and compromise rather than violent force, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. And thanksgiving to the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur, as today they celebrate their Congregational Feast Day, may they be richly blessed and continue to spread the goodness of our good God to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Catholic schools that the administrators, teachers, staff, volunteers, and benefactors would be abundantly blessed for their dedication, love, and service to the students. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Catholic school students that each one of us would know deep in our hearts that we are created in divine image for our loving God, and that every student is a precious gift in our schools. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our actions may show God's care for the injured, sick, and the dying, especially all those in our East Catholic community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of God's peace will shine on our deceased relatives, friends, and today we remember Sister Anne Gandon, Sister of Notre Dame de Namur, Jean Sharon, Barbara Steen, Marie Andrews, Marvin Mitchell Jr., Matt Malloy, Fernando Coranes, Paul McLaughlin, James Murphy, and Dean Tully. May they all have eternal life and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. That God will hear our prayers, we offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We also pray for each and every one of us, especially for our students, that in our time here in East Catholic, we don't only discover who we are, but that we focus on the story who God wants us to be. He knows our potential. He knows the men and women we can all become with his help. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of life, the gift of vocations, and for our school. We ask you to bless each and every one of us and our families, and to give an answer to our prayers. We ask everything through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of 
May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that, our, that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the lives of the world as a lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right in us. us. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, O Eternal Son, was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and life of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy earth, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon the light of the so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. In giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
who we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. For we've been reigned forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So the suffering shall be the sign of peace. As our ushers make their way to the back of the auditorium to guide you through the protocol for Holy Communion, just a reminder that we will exit out of our rows from the right hand side, go to our first Eucharistic minister in the back of the auditorium, and return the opposite side. For those that will be receiving the low glucose, Ms. Taylor will have that saborium that will contain the glucose. Father Jaime will distribute the Holy Communion to the Sisters of Notre Dame first and make his way to the back of the auditorium to assist in distribution of Holy Communion. Thank you for taking this opportunity to be mindful and prayerful as we reflect on the goodness of our good God.
school. Yeah. 